Well, hi. Um, bit of an interesting day right now. Didn't expect to be making this video, but I was just about to bring my parts car in off the street to start stripping it ready to build my project car. And I've discovered something that's kind of made me sad. Open the door, find out someone tried to steal it. The uh, steering column cover's been ripped off. The ignition's been ripped apart. The um, knee kickboard thing that covered all the fuses and everything, kick panel, that's all been ripped off. Luckily though, they didn't get it. But now I have a screwed ignition that I can't start the car. So, I guess the best thing to do out of this is to make a video and let's learn how to hotwire a car. So having a closer look, they've really had a good old go at this. This is the key barrel here that's been sheared off all along there and all down there. So that's supposed to go up there. That was all one piece once upon a time. Actually three sides up there as well. So three sides have been sheared off. All the uh, wiring, this is all part of the immobilizer wiring. That's all ripped apart. Backside over here. There's the ignition switch, the wiring loom, that's probably what they're trying to get their hands on. And then they also ripped into the center console. I'm not sure exactly why they were trying to do that. I'm guessing they were trying to find an immobilizer or something to override. Maybe it doesn't have a lock on it, so I don't know why they decided they needed to rip into that, but apparently they did. But as I said, it was the immobilizer that saved us, so. Without an immobilizer, this would have been all they needed. You've got everything you need here. You've got your constant ground, constant power. You've got your accessory line, the ignition line, and your starter. Um, and that's just a simple switch. So stick something in there, twist it round, and it should start. Except, luckily for me, the immobilizer did its job. I think you can see it there. That's the ignition switch into the wiring loom. And you could just turn it like that. So that would be your accessories, ignition, and then start. But it doesn't work on this because the immobilizer is taking over. So I'm going to see if I can work out how to uh, get the immobilizer working again. Okay, let's have a look at what I've done here. Basically, I've rebuilt the tumbler with the immobilizer there. So, this is the original tumbler broken off. This is where your power comes in to the immobilizer. It's where your power goes out. And then the key scrambles the signal. So the power goes through, through that contact up into the key fob, key scrambles the signal, power goes out the stem of the key and makes contact back here and that's what tells the immobilizer that the key's in the ignition. And so I've just put all that back together, jammed it all in there, put the key in the ignition position so that this is where it would sit when the ignition is on. And so hopefully now the immobilizer position your left, the immobilizer can tell that we've got the right key, so just like before, I'm going to stick that in there, let's see what happens, alright, that's the ignition on, there we go, so, not really hot wiring a car, probably not the best idea to be showing how to hot wire a car completely on YouTube, I still needed the key to get it started. But it started. Well, there we are. That was a bit of an adventure I didn't expect to have. Luckily, it was just the parts car and not the project car, so I can still strip it to the bits I want and I can still sell it and show people that the motor's still good. So, 
that's good news, I guess. And they didn't get away with the car, which is even better news. Um, so yeah, shows you it's worth having an immobilizer. People do try, and immobilizers do work. So, yeah, for immobilizers, I guess. See you later.